Good morning, everyone. And in pediatrics, our topic is malnutrition. In malnutrition, we are going to discuss conditions like rickets, as well as kosher core, protein and energy malnutrition, and we are going to discuss the approach to short stature. So, talking about the malnutrition, malnutrition is uh, common and it is worldwide. Um, worldwide um, problem and uh, you can say like directly or indirectly about third of all the deaths in children under five years of age is due to malnutrition um, so and of course like in developing countries you know uh, malnutrition is more and more common than the developed countries and uh, uh, it's not like only about diet rather you can say different chronic illnesses like congenital heart disease malignant disease and things like this can cause malnutrition problems as well git problems can be there inflammatory bowel disease cerebral palsy and things like this so first of all uh, we must know how we do nutritional assessment um, if you know that you know one of the thing is we do this growth chart thing and uh, we plot the weight and the height as well as we measure the uh, head circumference so all the things and we see like either it's 50 percentile or either the how the baby is behaving like you can see the difference between the yellow and the red lines the red line is like crossing like the standard deviation lines um, so if you'll talk about the height for example because in this one we are going also going to discuss the approach to the short stature so short stature we, we define like someone in which the height is less than third percentile or someone who is going showing a regression pattern we say it, that the baby is having uh, <clears throat> some problem with the stature so whenever like the babies come to the hospitals we always do the dietary assessment of the patients as well as uh, we check their weight we check their height we can check their skin fold thickness or tricep thickness. Um, sometimes the upper arm thickness can be used as well. And we can do a lot of lab investigations as well like uh, vitamin D levels, calcium levels, things like this, right? So we had already done one topic called as failure to thrive, if you remember. So... Uh, whenever there is malnutrition you know there are different consequences of course all the systems are affected there is delayed wound healing there is increased morbidity increased mortality there is respiratory muscle dysfunction uh, and many 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 other problems are there so whenever we get any malnutrition case of course we we found like either it's a protein malnutrition either it is rickets or whatever like and of course like the treatment is simply to provide them nutrition if the problem is less calorie diet or uh, less diet simply or less calories taken by the kids but like if the problem is some underlying problem like a chronic disease we have to uh, we have to deal with that so uh, Talking about, for example, I will show you a condition called as uh, um, okay, like this one is you can say uh, you can see the green countries and the yellow one or the red one, like in which like the population, the percentage of the percentage of the population is severely malnourished. So you can see like this baby. So. 
as well as the causes of malnutrition you know see insufficient access to food or inadequate health services or inadequate maternal and paternal care or inadequate diet or there could be a disease problem so talking about the theology long term insufficiency of intake diseases can be there congenital issues can be there so anyhow um what i'm going to talk about here is uh, some disease directed lecture and ag again like this is you can say that you know the pathophysiology of malnutrition what will happen hypoproteinemia will lead to edema uh, fat consumption you know can lead to marasmus so vitamin d deficiency will lead to rickets the complications of malnutrition can be hypoglycemia anemia infections and so like all this pathophysiology of course like uh, now uh, you can see like there is two types of protein energy malnutrition one is called as marasmus one is called as kosher core so talking about the this for like globally one third of the childhood deaths are attributed to undernutrition and uh, who recommends you know some nutritional st status which should be ex expressed as like uh, weight for height or made up parameters circumference or what should be the height or uh, in these patients okay so severe protein energy malnutrition in children usually leads to a condition called as marasmus okay so it's a chronic protein energy malnutrition which leads to a condition called as marasmus so now this one is like the high weight for height more than three standard deviation below the median or you can say uh, less than 70% weight for height uh, thing now one thing you will see over here in this one there is no edema and if you will see over here skin fold thickness if you will measure in this kid or the mid arm circumference if you will measure in this one you know that will be too much reduced so whereas in kosher core um, this is also a manifestation of uh, severe protein malnutrition but uh, in this one there is generalized edema you can see you can see the edema in this patient in this baby and there is wasting of course but the edema is there so remember marasmus is without edema and this one is with edema so in this one of course because there is edema so we cannot take the weight because in this one maybe the weight is not reduced but uh, in this one of course the weight is severely reduced right so you can see the pathophysiology of this one uh, talking about marasmus over here in this one like subcutaneous fat is decreased and there is loss of weight whereas in kosher core there is no loss of weight like because there is edema so they have like uh, skin rashes they have like distended abdomen their liver is enlarged usually due to fatty infiltration their hairs are not healthy they present with diarrhea hypothermia bradycardia hypotension so now one of the thing which i wanted to talk here is like uh, when we are going to check their plasma or their blood testing you know what we found in them like uh, low albumin level low serum total protein level low pre -al pre, -pre albumin level also low potassium level low glucose levels low serum cholesterol low essential amino acids amino acids in these patients low serum urea urine urea also decreased potassium decreased sodium decreased calcium decreased so all these things are, are are decreased right 
It is not clear, by the way, why some children with protein energy malnutrition develop kwashiorkor core and others develop marismas. But uh, <coughs> kwashiorkor core is more present when the infants are not weaned from the breast until about 12 months of age. So, uh, and kwashiorkor core basically develops after acute infections like measles or gastroenteritis, things like this. So uh, now, of course, we diagnose them based on the nutritional assessment, as I told you, weight, height, or like entro an anthropometry uh, assessment and laboratory assessment. Uh, or like we can do the lab investigations on these patients and doing the examination you found like either there is edema or there is no edema based on that we see okay so one of the student he she, like she complained like maybe I'm not stopping at the slides rather I'm just scrolling them but as you guys know like you know whatever I say like doesn't buy because I'm not used to teach on the PPT so Excuse me for that. So how we manage these patients is simply uh, by refeeding them. And most of the babies, you know, they need hospital care to refeed them. And we have to take care of their electrolyte imbalances, mineral imbalances, and micronutrients imbalances. So... Some of the things are acute problems like, you know, hypoglycemia should be managed quickly. Hypothermia should be managed quickly. Dehydration should be managed quickly. Electrolyte disturbance should be managed quickly. And then some of the conditions, you know, of course, we have to refeed them in the hospitals. And uh, we give them good calorie diet. Um, nowadays, there are different formulas are also available which are called as high calorie formulas and uh, we give them this thing simply to, to refeed them. So uh, like there are different issues with refeeding as well if you can see uh, like when we refeed them many of the babies you know they develop some side effects as well like uh, hypophosphatinemia or like micronutrients so we we have to correct them as well so simply like remember that uh, it is about giving calories high with nf protein or a balanced diet you can say so this one is like when the mild degree is there how much calorie supply should be given how much protein should be given when moderate and severe how much calories and how much proteins should be given to the patients so uh, one of the thing, you know, uh, which is the caused by vitamin D deficiency is called as rickets. So uh, rickets is usually caused by vitamin D deficiency or some defect in the metabolism of vitamin D. So what happens like simply there is low serum calcium and as you know, like uh, how the vitamin D is controlled in the body, uh, basically, you know, rickets, like if we'll go in details, rickets is a very long, long, long topic, like, you know, uh, vitamin D is absorbed from the diet and bile salts play a role. It goes to the blood and then uh, vitamin D which is from the skin and which is from the drugs, you know, they're absorbed in the blood and they're taken to the liver and uh, it's in the D3 form and, you know, the liver is the one which changes into 25-D-hydroxycholicalciferol and, and, you know, the kidneys play a role as well. What you can say, change into the active form, which is 125-D-hydroxycholicalciferol so you can see over here and what is the, it is uh, how it is regulated you know by parathyroid hormone 
And what are the functions of vitamin D? Simply, it promotes the absorption of calcium and phosphorus from the intestines. So which means when the when vitamin D is low in the body, there will be low calcium level. And it also increases reabsorption of phosphate in the kidney. It acts on bone to release calcium and phosphate into the blood. It promotes calcium and phosphorus deposition in bone through stimulating osteoblast. B for builders, so osteoblasts are the bone building cells. It increases the 7-dehydrocholic cholesterol content in the skin through specific receptors. Increase memory gland calcium transport and regulate immune function. So now, <laughs> what happens is that uh, uh, whenever um, parathyroid hormone is released, you know, it normalizes the serum calcium levels, but it takes the calcium from the bones and uh, what happens is uh, vitamin D deficiency, which is caused by lack of sunshine or underfeeding or rapid growth or influence of the disease like diarrhea, liver disease or influence of the medications like glucocorticoid, phenytoin and phenobarbital. Uh, what happens is, uh, again, lack of vitamin D Phosphate absorb, uh, calcium phosphate absorption is decreased, there will be hypocalcemia and uh, or there can be uh, increased parathyroid hormone which will increase the osteoclast activity like and more and more calcium will be absorbed from the bone and calcium will be uh, decreased in the bone of course like so what will happen like there will be bone demineralization or bone mineralization will be decreased right. So this is one of the way okay. Uh, this is the, like how tetany occurs in uh, when there is hypocalcemia. So uh, now um, the, the important thing I want to tell you here is what uh, basically vitamin D deficiency in the babies they causes bone deformities, right? So you can see the features over here. Uh, these are like all the skeletal changes of rickets they are showing. So, so it can also present without bone abnormalities, but with the symptoms of hypocalcemia. And what are the symptoms of hypocalcemia, which are basically can lead to seizures, neuromuscular irritability like tetany, or some other things like apnea. So the presentation is more common before two years of age when there is high demand of calcium in rapidly growing bone is there. So rickets signifies a failure in mineralization of the growing bones or the osteoid tissue. Um, what happens is um, simply um, there could be nutritional factors like uh, the people who are living in the areas where the sunlight exposure is not good or uh, like you know we give babies vitamin D drops usually to all the babies uh, so whenever like either there could be see decrease in the diet or decrease in vitamin D levels decrease exposure to the sun Decrease absorption from the intestine, like in the case of some bowel problems like celiac disease or cystic fibrosis. Or, for example, there is defective production of uh, 25-hydroxy, dihydroxy polycalciferol, like in liver disease or uh, certain drugs which increase the metabolism of the drug, uh, vitamin D or this one. In the case of medications like phenobarbital or decreased production of this one, 125-dihydroxycholicalciferol, 125 uh, for example, in chronic renal disease, because this is the one which produces, right? So, in this one, in this case, you know, it is also called as hereditary type 1 vitamin D resistant or 
विटामिन डी डिपेंडेंट क्रिकेट्स और अफेमिलियल एक्स लिंक्ड हाइपोफॉस्फेटेमिक क्रिकेट्स लाइक इन विच देर इज रीनल ट्यूबुलर डिफेक्ट इज देयर or sometimes you know there is like the target organ or you can say like this one cannot act on the organs we call it as hereditary vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 so there is basically a mutation in the vitamin d receptor gene so uh what i wanted to tell you is just give me one second i want to search something it have different types simply and um okay could found anything simply um okay so see the defect can be here liver the defect can be in the kidney the defect can be in the transport defect can be in the receptors where this vitamin should go and affect so uh, that's why it is hereditary type 1 vitamin d resistant or hereditary type 2 or what you can say in which the, the receptors genes are defective so type 1 is also called as vitamin d resistant and type 2 is also called as vitamin d dependent rickets so <coughs> now to tell you the features of this condition um, the clinical manifestations uh, is uh, you can say the earliest sign of the rickets basically present like this way uh, we call it as craniotabies craniotabies See, this is a guy with cranial tabies. So <clears throat> now, when we touch their skull, you know it feels like a ping pong ball sensation, or you can say like it's a soft one. So we can check it by this way. And sometimes the costochondral junctions are palpable as well. Uh, uh sorry the, this one rather i wanted to show you um mm. that is called as rachitic rizori this one so um, i don't know here that like the picture is not clear okay so simply what happens is you can see these grooves over here okay at the costochondral junction you can see them clearly so that is one of the presentation yeah i can i think here um, you see here these grooves you can you can see over here so this is called as rachitic rizori or uh their wrists joints are having problem as well especially when they are crawling the kids are crawling so the wrist joint see they they are very 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 you can say you can feel the uh, depression in them and they have when they started walking they have bowing of the legs see bowing of the legs or you can see bowing of the legs okay so Uh, this is how they present uh like because their bones are soft because of less mineralization so one of the thing is called as harrison groove or herrick harrison sulcus which i wanted to show you here yes this one see it is called as rachitic bangle you can see it looks like like this one is wearing a bangle like because of bangle there is depression right and one of the thing is they can have like scoliosis see their vertebral column is s shaped so this is called a scoliosis so remember like s shaped vertebral column is scoliosis right 
and this is lordosis lumbar lordosis when it is hump back uh, this is a funnel chest you can see over here and this one is like harrison's screw okay now why it is there because you know the diaphragm is attached over here so the diaphragm because of the pressure of the diaphragm you know this there is inward um, you can say chest inward um, stretch is there from inside so they make the sulcus called as Harry, Harrison groove or Harrison sulcus so these are the clinical features of uh, uh, you can say um, rickets okay so now these are other things guys like other other things like not not so important so uh, I will not show you this one rather I will go and discuss uh, um, the diagnosis so how we diagnose the patients of uh, um, rickets is uh, by the diagnosis is done is we can take the history physical examination then we can do x-ray imaging uh, you can see the x-ray imaging over here this is the wrist x-ray in the normal kid and this one is with rickets and you can see over here loss of bone density all over here right so we can do blood biochemistry so detailed history calcium and vitamin intake you can do serum calcium levels you can which can be low or normal phosphorus will be low plasma alkaline phosphatase will be increased because whenever there is any problem with the bone they will be raised 25 hydroxy uh, dihydroxy uh, vitamin d you can say is a reliable diagnostic criteria we can choose and it will be low and Parathyroid, of course, it will be elevated. Why? Because there is less calcium. So it will be like hyperfunctioning. So we can do x-ray as well. So this is like the diagnosis. It's how, how they make the diagnosis of the patient, right? And uh, how to manage these patients or treatment? Of course, we have to give vitamin D, right? So nutrition records is managed by simply correcting the, giving the balanced diet, administrating giving them vitamin d3 or cholecalciferol and uh, uh, like it it, need, it takes like around two to four weeks for the healing to occur and to lower the alkaline phosphatase alp levels and we can see the healing on the x-rays as well but the complete recovery from the bony disorders takes years guys so intramuscular can be given and oral can be given so these are all the calcium supplements available in Chinese market. So these are the tablets, capsules, physical therapy or surgery for skeletal malformations, of course. Okay, so this is how it is given. It is done. So you can see over here, uh, they're showing you the Harrison sulcus and this is like rickets in a three-year-old boy with celiac disease. Clinical features like misery, failure to thrive, short stature, frontal bossing of the skull, craniotabies, delayed closure of anterior fontanelle, lab, delayed dentition, rickett rosary, Harrison sulcus, expansion of metaphysis, especially wrist or bangle wrist, bowing of height or bowing of the legs, hypotonia and seizures. Of course, seizures can occur due to hypocalcemia, guys. Simply, okay. Uh, uh, in the in the patients who have rickets, uh, so this uh, this thing is uh, how we uh, diagnose and uh, we deal with this thing. Okay, so one of the thing is. Basically, uh, what we have to discuss today is short stature, right? So, uh, uh, how we define short stature again? Height less than third percentile. Okay. 
So third height less than third percentile is called as short stature. Uh, now uh, I told you like you know before that there is a way of calculating the we can say mid parental height for boys and girls. You know we take the father height, mother height, and for boys we add thirteen, and for girls we separate thirteen and divide it by two gives you the mid parental height. Like you can say the expected height for the babies to for the adults like of course to achieve and short stature it's you can say it's effect like around 2.5 percent of the population but there is like people who are late like you can say uh, who catch up late simply which is called as constitutional delay or there could be familial delay as well so one of the thing is like we calculate the uh, mid uh, parental height okay how it is calculated like simply uh, father uh, you can say uh, father and plus you can say plus mother height okay uh, plus some books say 13 some books say 12.5 so remember at 13 so plus 13 centimeter for boys and of course like father mother height should be taken as 70 uh, 13 centi uh, in centimeters as well and divided by two all the things like all these things divided by two uh, for boys okay and for girls like it is minus 13 okay so this one is for boys of course for boys for boys and what I'm saying uh, for girls subtract 13 okay instead of adding 13 subtract 13 so we always calculate the same okay so now uh, to tell you like uh, uh, when the height is less you know it's not like this like when the height is less or someone is complaining of short stature like the child is abnormal because many of the child basically are normal uh, they are short because their parents are short so familial because if the father is 5.5 and the mother is 5 so don't expect the son or a daughter to be 6.5 or if the father is 6 and the mother is 5.10 for example I'm talking about in feet so we can expect like the child should be around that a that that height so that's why there's a general trend like you know there are families which are their height is good and there are families when the height is uh, like average or low so remember always calculate the mid parental height very 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 important so <laughs> but of course it could be path there could be pathological causes which i will tell you now uh, okay so now there is something called as growth velocity velocity okay there is something called as growth or you can say height velocity it is simply the grade of the like the rate of growth so we see number one either there is short stature is present or not yes or no number second we see the rate what is the rate of growth Either it is declining, either it is going the same way. Okay. So, uh, the growth failure is identified when the child height is crossing the percentile lines. Okay. So, what I mean to say here is again, I will show you the same graph again. You can see over here, the yellow line ha have growth, good growth velocity, but this one, see the velocity is decreasing. Okay, so that's the important trend to notice in in the patients. Okay, in the babies, of course, in the children, we can say. So, <clears throat> and you should be cautious while measuring this thing. Okay. Like the two accurate measures, measurement should be there at least six months apart. 
to calculate the growth or height velocity and it is like centimeters per year you know, how many centimeters are achieved in in years right so uh, this thing it should be checked uh, now we also see the weight either the height is also only affected or either the weight is also affected okay so you can say the height percentile should be compared with the weight percentile okay that's very important as well uh, because uh, for example you know because whenever we are dealing with the short stature you know um, we have to evaluate or we have to question ourselves you can say while dealing with such a patient that we have to see like either uh, number question number one is um, is it a intrauterine growth retardation okay I will tell you like what is that second thing uh, we will question like is the growth uh, um, is proportional Number third, we will see like either is the growth velocity is normal or not, right? And number fourth is, which is again a very important concept to know, like is the bone age delayed or not? So, uh, what is bone age? Again, I will take the help of Bing to show you guys um, why, because you know we do a wrist X-ray. Um, for for growth or for age um, what to do is yes this one is very 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 good uh, see uh, most of the time you can say the left hand x-ray is done okay so what to do is simply um, they, they, they do a sorry don't know what's wrong with this thing but uh, there is like before it works see you can say um, see the, how the bones appear in this one or this one this is 11 year old this is 14 year old and this one is eight years of age right and this one is like five years of age okay so uh, the radiologists know like you know which bones they uh, you can say they fuse the ossify and how they look like at different age period so this is called as the bone age so we do take an x-ray and we see like either there is um, bone age is equal to chronological age or bone age is less than chronological age or the bone age is more than chronological age so this thing is very 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 important right so uh, now um, one of the thing which we can quickly do is uh, um, why short stature is problem because you know many of the time you know it could be a psychological trauma for the kids especially when they're school going and they have like poor school self esteem and they bully they are bullied at the school like for being a short stature okay so uh, th th these things are the important one like that's that's why like you know it's important to manage this thing um, so how we approach these cases now like how to know like how we approach these cases one of the thing is uh, um, simply um, I will tell you the causes and then uh, I will tell you how to approach these cases so taking a new slide uh, what are the causes of short stature uh, see number one is intrauterine growth growth tradition like from the birth they had some problem with the growth and internally they had like this and the second thing is like you found like there is no intrauterine growth retardation okay so of course like whenever it is intrauterine growth growth retardation so of course like think about uh, uh, what you can say uh, chromosomal abnormalities okay What I mean to say, like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, things like this, or um, think about, for example, the drug exposures in the during the pregnancy, like uh, um, teratogen drugs, okay, or ask about infections during pregnancy, or ask about uh, any any diagnosed condition during during pregnancy, right? So 
simply to look for the causes which can cause intrauterine growth retardation. And whatever like you will not found like there is growth retardation, intrauterine growth retardation, then like you know see well, either uh, there is like the short stature is pro pro proportionate or there is disproportion. Uh, what I mean to say over here is like uh, or disproportionate. Uh, what I mean to say over here is uh, how we see this one is simply uh, we check the upper and lower segment ratio. Okay. Uh, what is upper segment is simply they measure the head to pu pubic symphysis and the lower segment is like from pubic symphysis to the toes. Okay. So normally the newborn when we when we compare these two values like upper divided by lower for the newborn because their upper body is bigger than the legs so it is 1.7. For young children, it is 1.4 and for adults, it is 0.9. Like if you will measure your upper body and the lower body, you will found like their upper body is a little smaller than the lower body. But the females, like they have one, their legs. And uh, when we do these measurements, it is, they have exactly like same upper to lower body ratio, right? So simply, when there is disproportionate uh, in this uh, upper to lower body segment ratio, um, think about uh, um, skeletal dysplasias, skeletal dysplasias, okay, uh, can be the cause, of course. And whenever like the uh, uh, short stature is proportionate, then we see the growth velocity. So there could be normal growth velocity and there could be abnormal or you can say slow growth velocity okay, or height velocity whatever you can say so now when the normal growth velocity is there guys see number one cause could be constitutional delay or constitutional uh, growth delay okay so think about this thing one cause can be this thing and the other cause which can be there is uh, um, uh, familial familial short stature means it means like the the uh, the parents are so short right so what is constitutional growth delay for example um, you will found in the families that you know uh, their one kid was having short height until the age of 11 but suddenly he started gaining the height and reach the normal height okay so maybe you'll found a family history maybe there it's a delayed puberty which is our next topic maybe he is uh, um, treated with some medications like uh, androgens or uh, like these things right uh, familiar short delay uh, sh uh, short stature is simply uh, when you will do uh, okay in constitutional growth delay, when you will check the bone age, you know, their bone age will be delayed as well. Okay. But in familial short stature, when you will do their chest uh, wrist x-ray, what you will found like they will be having normal bone age. So, of course, like in this one, of course, like there is family, family, you will found like the family is short or familial short stature is there, right? Then bone age will be normal. And of course, like this one, we cannot treat. Okay, this one we cannot treat. Okay, and whenever like there is slow growth velocity, then you have to think about the condition like endocrinal, endocrinal problems can be there. Um, chronic diseases can be there. Okay, uh, as well as you can say, um, psychosocial problems can be there so what i mean to say here is endocrinal problem like you know growth hormone deficiency hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism hypopituitarism chronic disease like congenital heart defects celiac disease inflammatory bowel disease cystic fibrosis 
chronic infections, chronic renal failure, things like this. Okay, and uh, when it is about, you can say, the psychosocial neglect. Okay, uh, it is also called as psychosocial dwarfism. Okay, psychosocial um, dwarfism. So. Uh, what is this one? Um, they have usually decreased height and weight, and uh, this is due to neglect, by the way. Okay, so this is like are the these are the causes, and this is how we think like either there is growth retardation or not, and when it is not, either it is proportionate or disproportionate, and if it is proportionate, so either the growth velocity is normal or it is slow, right? So this is how we approach. Now, guys. Uh, the important thing over here is what? So, familial, you understand like most parents who are short, like their child will be short household, short household, right? And just you can reassure the parents that, you know, it's normal. And uh, what is constitutional delay? Uh, these are the children who have delayed puberty. And most of the time we found the family history as well. Okay. It can be due to dieting or exercise or physical training. Okay. So simply when we examine them, we will found like they have de even delayed sexual changes. So, but we tell them that, you know, there are chances like they, are, they will achieve their normal height. They, it is just constitutional delay. And rest are like all the conditions like, you know, what is growth hormone deficiency? You know, what is hypothyroidism? You know, what is Cushing syndrome? You know, what are chronic illnesses? Okay. So things like this. So, <coughs> there are conditions in which the child height is severely reduced, extremely short height. This occur in some conditions like, you know, there is a syndrome called as Laren syndrome in which like there is, um, uh, you can say that they are resistant to the growth hormone. And if you also call it as primordial dwarfism. Uh, there is something called as idiopathic short stature as well, in which like we don't know what is the cause of that thing. So that's that's the important thing. So guys, see how we approach these patients. Uh, the approach is very very uh, like that's what, what I'm, I'm teaching you. See, so first of all, you will examine the growth chart. Okay, you will see like what are the percentile lines, what is the length, what is the height, what is the weight, what is the head circumference, and I already explained you that you know. This thing like you will see the growth velocity and you will calculate the mid parental height you will do all these things right then consider familial low birth weight constitutional delay of growth and puberty syndromes and skeletal dysplasia so I already explained you the causes right so see they are talking about this thing so either it's a growth failure with crossing of Percentile lines, what I'm ta talking, I told you already, see this one, growth velocity. I explain you what is the concept of this thing. Consider endocrine, including therapeutic, like corticosteroids, nutritional, chronic illnesses, and psychosocial deprivation. Determine the mid-parental height, okay, for the target range. Like, by this way, you would know, like, how much the baby can, will reach. And the history, you will ask about the birth, you will ask about the length, height, head circumference, gestational age. Pregnancy history is very important because, see, you have to rule out intrauterine growth retardation. Infection, intrauterine growth restriction, drugs, use, alcohol, smoking. I will include infections in that one as well. Take the feeding history or nutritional history. I told you the mnemonic binds, birth, immunization, nutrition and development. So see, developmental milestones. Family history of constitutional delay of growth and puberty or other disease. So see, this one will give you a lot of clue to point towards constitutional delay. So concern marriages, you know, when they have too much, so they have like a lot of inherited problems. And look for in history, ask for the features of chronic illnesses, uh, endocrine causes, hypothyroidism, pituitary tumors, Cushing syndrome, or psychosocial deprivation. Ask for any medication used like androgens or corticosteroids. In examination, the things you have to notice is 
dysmorphic features. So if you found dysmorphic features, maybe you will diagnose Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, okay, uh, things like this. Look for the signs of chronic illnesses. Look for the signs of endocrine illnesses. Uh, disproportionate. Look for like either there is skeletal dysplasia or either the, like there's disproportional growth of the upper and the lower part and assess their pubertal stage so how we assess their pubertal stage we will talk in puberty okay i will show you what is tenor staging so we use that so in examination you will found this thing so <clears throat> then if you will talk about the investigations guys of course if you know the causes you can talk about the investigations but I can I can write some of them so investigations of course there are many number one and the most important remember x-ray of the wrist okay to see like either this is constitution delay okay or what or to see like either the chronological age is same like bone age or more right CBC it will guide you towards anemia for example, in celiac disease and Crohn's disease, check their blood, blood urea nitrogens. Check their electrolytes. Chronic renal failure, you know, all these things, <clears throat> they will be raised. Check their calcium levels for bone diseases, for renal disorders. Check their phosphate levels. Check their thyroid levels because thyroid function test. Why? Because you know thyroid problems can cause karyotyping can be done. Karyotyping. Why? Because chromosomal abnormalities, Turner syndrome, things like this. Uh, do celiac screening. How we do that, you know, we check endo, uh, anti endomyzel or anti tissue trans trans glutaminase antibodies. Do CRP or ESR to check for any inflammatory conditions, any inflammatory conditions. So, like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn disease, growth hormone levels. Very important. Uh, you can do that test called as. Uh, Cortisol level, cortisol levels for Cushing syndrome. So, uh, and also imaging like MRI or CT scan for any intracranial tumors. Okay, so all this investigation. So, if you know the causes, of course, you can talk about the investigations uh, in the patient's and What is the treatment, guys? Simply um, treatment in case of familial delay, of course, like you can simply tell them that reassurance right like your child is going to attain the uh, final height of course right uh, in constitutional delay what you can do you can simply reassure the parents you can tell that okay uh, though your child height is smaller we can understand that but uh, as like there is history of constitutional delay or his sexual staging or his x-rays says that it looks like constitutional delay so like most probably he is going to achieve his diet. Treat the underlying cause, of course. Treat the celiac disease. Manage manage the underlying causes. Uh, for uh, chromosomal abnormalities, we cannot do much. But if you found growth hormone deficiency, okay, you can give them growth hormone for growth hormone deficiency like when you when it is documented deficiency we can give them growth hormone it is given by subcutaneous injections okay uh, but uh, uh, what you can say internal syndrome we also give them growth hormone injections chronic renal failure we give them growth hormone injections prader willi syndrome we can give them growth hormone injections okay uh, simply it it have a good results in them uh, so it is given by subcutaneous injection. So uh, 
uh, nowadays uh, like uh, there is recombinant uh, IGF-1 therapy is also available but expensive and just available in specialized centers not everywhere so if, if it is like documented growth hormone a deficiency of course give them that uh, for all the treatable causes treat them okay or simply treat the underlying causes or manage the underlying causes rest for familial reassurance for familial and constant uh, constitutional delay okay so for this one you know we can just reshow the parents so that's all guys for this lecture so thank you so much for listening we'll see you in the next lecture